Ulevel Islamiyat, October 2015, Unit 1, Paper 1. I choose any two of the following passages from the Quran and briefly describe the main themes in each passage. Four marks. Briefly explain the importance of the themes in a Muslim's life today. Answer A. Theme Surah 96, 1 to 5. These five verses of Surah Ikhra or Al Alaq are the first ever revelation that the Prophet received in the cave of Hera in Ramadan 610 AD. The remaining six, six verses were revealed later when the Prophet began to offer regular prayer in the precincts of the Kaaba. The command of read in the name of your Lord in the first verse means the Prophet was already familiar with one supreme God. The word Alak also uh, was traditionally the word Alak was traditionally translated as a clot of congealed blood. In modern times, it refers to the primary state of embryo. The next verses mention God's power to create humans from a humble origin and mature and mature them to acquire worldly knowledge by using the pen. The ability to read and write shapen human intellectual evolution over the ages. The last verse points to God's will to grant human spiritual knowledge through divine revelation as and when it was required. Surah 99 Many commentators believe it to be a late Meccan surah, but some others regard it an early Mathrian surah. The surah um, focuses on three main aspects of the end of time. First, it alerts humans about the initial horrible, horrible signs of beginning of the day of judgment. They include the terrible convulsions the earth will experience. The earth will throw up all its contents. <clears throat> Another Quranic verse mentions the same as, and when the earth is flattened and casts forth, a, what is within it? Surah 84, I 3 to 4. Al in Shikok. Secondly, it informs the humans about the earth bearing witness to all their needs, such as uh, deeds, much to their surprise. Humans will be shocked and distressed to see all this as they had never imagined anything like this. Finally, it presents the scene of the divine code where all will be categorized according to their good and evil deeds under the immaculate justice dispensed by God. Even the smallest possible deeds will be rewarded by God as he has arranged for the recording of each and every action of humans. Surah 114 this is the surah, last surah of the Quran revealed together with surah 113. Both are called al Mawaddatan, the two protectors. al Mawaddatan, the two protectors. Some traditions declare them to be the Makkan surah, but relatively stronger sources prove them to be Madaniyan. Both teach Muslims uh, not to have any fears of the supernatural and unknown, and the internal and external evils 
that may affect them. Surah 113 mentions God's protection from the visible evils. This surah, on the other hand, reassures the Muslims of God's powers to protect them against the invisible or internal evil forces. Repetition of God's attributes in the first three verses implies God's special bond with humans. The remaining verses warn against Satan and mention his method of interesting humans. For this lesson, the Quran repeatedly declares verily Satan is an avowed enemy to man. Surah 12, Ayat 5, Yusuf. B. Importance of Themes 1. Surah 96, Ayat 1 to 5. These verses um, teach Muslims to acknowledge God's favors of creating humans from a low origin and then making them distinct from all other creatures by way of gaining knowledge. The gift of knowledge is so supreme that God commanded the angels to bow down before Adam because he was made superior due to the knowledge granted to him by God. The Quran states, and he taught Adam the names of all things. Surah 2, Ayat 31 to 34, Al Baqarah. According to many ahadiths, pen was among the first ever creations of God. That is why Surah 68, Al Kalam, begins with God, um, begins with God wearing, wearing the pen. The Quran at another place endorses the superiority of humans in these words. <clears throat> we have indeed created man in the best of modes. Surah 95, Ayat 4, Ayat 10. Then need, and they need to remember that God alone blessed them in multi multiple ways, and so they need to worship and be grateful to Him. And the verses highlight the importance of acquiring knowledge in order to keep their superior status. Surah 99 This surah strengthens Muslims' beliefs in God's power to bring an end to time and inculcates a genuine fear of accountability before Him. The mention of intense convulsions experienced by the earth is in itself a horrifying thing to imagine. With such a belief, uh, humans will learn about the worth worthlessness of this world and realize the value of true and eternal world. A strong fear of God and the hereafter will shape the conduct of Muslims uh, so that uh, they will obey his commands and not commit sins. If a believer has a true belief in the hereafter, he will not lose hope if he fails to get justice in this world. This belief will encourage him to avoid all possible evils. Similarly, uh, he will try to do as many good deeds as possible because God I uh, promise you the great rewards for good deeds. This Quranic verse describes the divine justice as surely God does not do injustice to the weight of an atom, and if it is a good deed, he multiplies it. Surah 4, Ayat 40, An Surah 114. This first word, kul, say, requires the Muslims to be obedient to God as that is the only way to seek his refuge against evil. A genuine obedience removes any arrogance towards God or a false belief of having control over their destinies. 
once the prophet was riding a mule along with a companion when the mule stumbled the companion said may satan perish the prophet said do not say that it encourages satan and he says i knocked to my strength i knocked with my strength but if you say in the name of god satan is dwarfed and becomes like a fly this means the remembrance of god guarantees the feet of satan the surah tells the muslims to beware of satan injecting evil thoughts in their hearts therefore they follow the prophet's tradition by reciting the last two surahs regularly and before going to bed regular recitation of the last two surahs acts as an antidote against all satanic forces however stronger they might be this is because of the fact that god has ultimate control over all forces question 2a using quran pas quranic passages as you have studied uh, from this syllabus and describe how god guided his messengers to increase their faith in him refer to at least two messengers in as your answers surah 10 no sorry 10 marks b god sends a human kind messengers from among their own committee communities explain why this is significant the Quran narrates the Quran narrates stories the Holy Quran narrates the stories of many of the prophetic messengers uh, various Quranic surahs have mentioned various messengers from Hazrat Adam unto the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and passages set for special duty are Surah 2, Ayat 30-37 and Story of Hulk Adam, Surah 6, Ayat 75-79 a Story of Hulk Ibrahim, Alayhi Salam and Surah 5, Ayat 110 a Story of Jesus Christ In addition to these, two passages exclusively deal with the whole Prophet uh, Surah 93 and surah 108 the quran describes the story of Hazrat ibrahim in a number of ways at one place it describes the story of a divine scheme arranged for successful identity of one god and through the perspective of god, god's god's mighty creations the passage surah 6 ayat 75 to 79 outlines the ways and through which god guided the Hazrat ibrahim and to identify the creator lord and through observing the laws by which god controls the heaven and earth the quran states how god unfolded his existence to Hazrat ibrahim salam, by way of his observation marvels of nature including various heavenly bodies the stars the sun and the moon in the beginning he got impressed by the shine but as they began to lose it god strengthened his belief about all these things his creatures the passage also proves that Hazrat ibrahim unlike his messengers was a man chosen by God because his intuitive progress of observing these celestial bodies and not accepting them as deities shows that it was all divinely ordained. God made arrangements for his birth in a polytheistic community that boasted of its knowledge about the heavenly bodies and health Ibrahim's quest in a search 
of the truth that led him to identify God. Behold, he said to his father and his people, What are these images, idols, to which as you are devoted? Surah 21, Ayat 52, Al Ampia. After this, Hazrat Ibrahim salam, like all other messengers, was rejected by his people who even tried to kill him, but he enjoyed a special divine protection and miraculously survived in the blazing fire. We said, O oh fire, be you cool at a means of safety for Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam. That's Surah 21, Ayat 69, Al Ambiya. Harat Ibrahim al-Islam's prayer to create a prophet from his progeny was also granted. A long line of messengers continued through his sons Ismail and Ishaq alayhim salam. The Quran at many places describes the story of God strengthening the belief of Jesus Christ to Harat Isa. Uh, he was born miraculously unto his mother, Mary, Hazrat Maryam, and was lifted alive unto the heavens by God's command. The Quran says, He, Jibrail al-Islam, said, Nay, I am only a messenger from your Lord, to announce to you the gift of a holy son. Surah 19 Ayat 19 to 20, Maryam. The passage 510 gives details of Jesus Christ's special association with God and a variety of prophetic signs granted to him. These include his ability to speak from the cradle, the divine gift of the book and the wisdom, his ability to give life unto the dead and the lifeless objects. Moreover, by God's command, uh, he could cure the leper and the blind. This shows how God had decreed miraculous events, decreed miraculous events for Jesus Christ to prove that messengers were no ordinary humans. The purpose of granting him powers was to tell the people about the powers of God and his special relationship with God. Finally, God made Jesus a living sign by saying to him, But they killed him not, nor crucified him, but so it was made to appear to them. Nay, God raised him up. Surah 4, Ayat 157, Al-Nisa. B. According to the Quran, humans are the best creatures of God. We indeed created humans in the best form, Surah 95, Ayat 4, Atin. Therefore, only humans could be elevated into the status of God's messengers. Humans can best interact with fellow humans in the community. They could address them in their language and answer the questions accordingly. So, God's messenger preached to his a message comfortably unto to their communities and uh, were able to raise a team of sincere followers being God's chosen men uh, they were blessed to be infallible this made them a role model for their fellows uh, who could follow uh, their teachings as uh, as well as uh, their conduct this trait reached its perfection in the last messenger of God, the Holy Prophet peace be upon him. If angels or jinns were sent as messenger, humans moved by the awe and powers might have started worshipping them. This would have killed the very purpose of sending the messengers preaching the heat. Question 3a. Describe the events of the Battle of Uhud. 10 marks. B. 
Success for Muslims depends on their obedience to the Prophet. Discuss this statement in relation to Muslim today. Answer A. Muslim Lines Muslim City Treat Camp Ohud Mountain and Makan Kavari a Muslim woman on hill Meccan Lines Khalid Ikrima Meccan Zakavari seizes the high ground once a Muslim airman left it for the plains. Answer A. The Quraysh wanted to avenge their defeat in the Battle of Badr, as many pagans and the as many pagans had lost their relatives in that in that encounter. Abu Sufyan became the new military chief at Makkah. He was encouraged by old, including the famous Jewish poet Kaab bin Al Ashraf to attack Medina with full force. Women of the aggrieved families also joined the Meccan army. They included Hind bint Utba, wife of Abu Sufyan, Umm Hakim, a granddaughter of Abu Jal, Abu Jal, and Fatima, a sister of Khalid bin Walid, were also part of the women being. Thus, Abu Sufyan was able to raise an army of 3,000 troops with 300 camels, 200 horses, and 700 coats of male armor. The left and right wings were under the command of Akrima and uh, Abu Jal, um, Akrima bin Abu Jal and Khalid bin Walid, respectively. While Amr bin Al As was the commander of the cavalry. Hind Haj Vashi bin Harab, the slave of Jubayr bin Mutim. He was assigned the mission of killing Khadrat Hamza, who had killed Hind's father in the Battle of Badr. This army reached north of Medina in parts 625 AD, Shawal 3 AH, and camped near the Uhud Hill along the road to Syria. Harat Abbas sent all three, all these details to the Prophet in a letter to a fast courier. Harat Habab, Harat Habab bin Mandar Ansari was sent to find out the number of the enemy army. The Prophet consulted his followers and accepted the proposal of facing the enemy outside Medina. He recruited 1,000 troops and left for the Uhud, Uhud Valley after the Pride of Prayer. On the way, the chief of Hypocrites, Abdullah bin Ubay, deserted with his 300 troops on the excuse that their houses were unsafe back in Medina. The Prophet camped with 700 tombs on the western slope of the Mount Uhud. Harad Musab bin Umair was made the flag bearer, Harad Zubair, commander of the right wing, and the horseman. The left wing was under Harad Mandar bin Amr. The Prophet appointed to 50 archers under Harad Abdullah bin Jubair on a narrow passage at the back of the Muslim army. 
they were strictly instructed not to leave unless ordered by the Prophet. The Quran mentions the Prophet's strategy as, Remember that morning you left your household to post the faithful at the at the station for the battle. Surah 3, Ayat 121, Ali Imran. In the American army, Khalid bin Walid was the commander of the right wing, whereas the left was under Akima bin Abu Jal. Safwan bin Umayya led the cavalry, while Talha was the flag bearer. In the single combat, Hazrat Ali and Hazrat Hamza killed Talha and Uthman from the pagan army. With this began the general fight, battle, and Hazrat Hamza, Hazrat Ali, and Hazrat Abu Dujana, a famous wrestler, broke into the enemy ranks. Muslim attack was fierce and the Quraysh began to retreat. Muslims continued to press the enemy and began to collect the spoils. When the 50 archers saw this, 36 of them also left their position and began to collect the booty. The Quran refers to these Muslims in these words, When you, with his Allah's permission, were about to annihilate your enemy, until you, the archers, flinched and fell to disputing about the order and disobeyed it. Surah 3, Ayat 152, Al Imran. Khalid bin Walid quickly mobilized his troops and attacked through the passage. This changed the scene, and the retreating Meccans also made a counterattack as they saw Khalid's powerful attack on Muslims. Many Muslims were killed, including Hazrat Hamza, who was martyred by Washi bin Harb. Washi hurled at him his spear uh, through his neighbor. Hazrat Hamza tried to advance but fell, fell down as martyr. Hind mutilated the dead body of Hazrat Hamza by chewing out his liver. In the panic, Hazrat Musab bin Umayr, who resembled the Prophet closely, was killed, and it was rumored that the Prophet had been martyred. The um, Prophet was also wounded and lost one tooth. All his disheartened, all this disheartened the Muslims, but soon Hazrat Khan bin Malik identified the Prophet and many Muslims rushed to him. Abdullah bin Kamiya struck the Prophet so hard that two links of the helmet got pierced into his face. A group of 20 com companions uh, made a shield around a shield of men around the Prophet and quickly climbed uh, towards the hilltop. Harad Ali and Hazrat Fatima dressed the bounds of the Prophet, Harad Aisha. Umm Sulaim and Umm Salid served water unto the injured Muslims. Abu Sufyan shouted, This day we are avenged for Badr. His army had killed 70 Muslims and left for Makkan, challenging to fight the next year. The Prophet reorganized his army and began to bury the Maltaid Muslims. The Quraysh lost only a 22 soldiers. B. Muslims are required to remember this Quranic injunction, whoever obeys the messenger indeed obeys God. Surah 4, Ayat 80, An-Nisa. Muslims today should remember that fight against enemies of Islam is only in the way of God. Supplies or booty comes as a bonus as if they are not the real objective of armed jihad. In the Battle of Uhud, 
most of the 50 archers they did not wait for the permission of the prophet to leave their place and the whole muslim army paid the price of their mistake muslims should follow the code of conduct of war as thought by the prophet this will bring them a guaranteed success as non-muslims will be impressed by the teachings of islam in times of peace and they should they should follow the prophet's guidelines by being obedient to god observing pillars of islam caring for others and being polite and humble caring for others and being polite and humble question for a the prophet entered mecca and took control of it in ath describe the main details of this event 10 marks b the prophet's characteristic of mercy was clearly demonstrated in this event is it realistic to expect Muslims today and to follow this example? Four marks. Answer A. Mecca. Answer A. The crash helplessly watched the growth of Islam after the truce of al hudaybiyah and encouraged by the defeat of Muslims in the Battle of Muta, September 629 AD, ADH. They incited their ally Banu Bakr to attack Ibn Khuza. Uh, who were the ally of Muslims? The Meccan chiefs who provided them weapons included Krima bin Abu Jal, Safwan bin Umayya, Suhail bin Amr, and others. Consequently, several men of Banu Bakr attacked Banu Khuza at night when they were asleep. Banu Khuza sought shelter in the Kaaba, but the chief of Banu Bakr, Nofer, commanded them to continue their mission. Thus, many innocent people of Banu Khuza were unjustly killed. The matter was reported to the Prophet, peace be upon him, by the chief of Banu Khuza, Amr bin Salim, who had rushed to Medina with his 40 men. The Prophet, according to the customs of justice, demanded the courage to pay the blood money dia to Banu Khuza to break their alliance or break the alliance with that tribe or dissolve the truce. The first two options went against the prestige and tradition of courage. Kartha bin Umb on behalf of the courage that only the last condition uh, would be acceptable however they realized their mistake and sent abu sufyan to medina uh, to settle the issue abu sufyan first went to the prophet and requested him to renew the treaty of hudaybiyah the uh, prophet gave no reply uh, he met his daughter, Ramla, Umme Habiba, one of the wives of the Prophet, but she refused to help him. He then asked Hazrat Abu Bakr and Hazrat Umar to intercede, but they too refused. He approached Hazrat Fatima, uh, who was sitting up with her son, Hazrat Hassan, and tried to emotionally pressurize her by way of Hassan, she too could not give any reassurance to him. Finally, at the resistance of Hazrat Ali, he came to the Prophet's mosque. Uh, finally, at the insistence of Hazrat Ali, he came to the Prophet's mosque and announced that he had 
renewed the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. And the Prophet was fully determined to take decision, decisive action against the Quraysh. Uh, he made the secret preparations to attack Mecca and raised a huge army of about 10,000. As many, as many Bedouin tribes joined him on his way to Mecca in January 630, he marched towards Mecca and camped at the hills of Mar al Zahra in the outskirts of Mecca. There at night, he ordered his troops to uh, light torches. This was a clever military tactic as the size of the army looked magnified when the Meccans looked at it from a distance. They abandoned the hope of resisting the Muslims. Abu Sufyan, perhaps on spying commission, was captured and taken to Prophet and embraced Islam. Next morning, the Prophet divided his army into four columns and placed each each column under a capable commander one under himself one under Abu Ubeda, and one under Khalid bin Walid and one given unto Saad bin Ubada. He strictly forbade use of arms unless the Meccans attacked he declared um, three places of safety for every Meccan. One's own house, Abu Sufyan's house, and the Kaaba. The army entered Mecca unresisted except for Khalid's column. Attack on his column led to death of two Muslims and 13 Meccans. The Prophet performed Tawaf the wife of the Kaaba went inside to pray and then destroyed 360 idols and um, other paintings and images. Uh, he was assisted by Ali in smashing idols and recited this, he recited this and say, the truth has prevailed and falsehood perished, for surely falsehood is bound to perish. Surah 17, Ayat 81, Al-Isra. Al he came out to address the Quraysh in the compound. He said, O oh, people of Quraysh, God has abolished the haughtiness of the Jahiliya and its veneration of ancestors. People all sprang from Adam, and Adam came from dust. Then he recited, O mankind, we have created you from a single pair of a male and a female. The most honored of you in the sight of God is he who is the most righteous of you. Surah 49, Ayat 13, Al Hujurat. The Prophet then delivered a sermon about fundamentals of Islam from the Safahil and asked the Quraysh what they expected from him. They replied, You are a noble brother and a son of the noble brother. The Prophet stunned them by saying, No blame on you. Be this day. Go, you are free. Thus a general pardon was declared for all except about ten blasphemous men. They included Abbar bin Aswad, Mikhyas, Subaba, Lati, Leti, Hoveras, Ambin Nukaid, Abdullah Hilal, Abdullah bin Qatal and some others, including four women. However, according to many sources, only four of them were executed. Almost the whole of Meccan submitted to the fold of Islam, including the worst enemies like 
Krima bin Abu Jal, Vashi bin Haram, Hamza's killer, and Hind, wife of Abu Sufyan. The Prophet stayed in Mecca for about 20 days to make arrangements for its administration. He redefined the boundaries of the Haram in Kaaba by Erecting capillaries, most of the offices of the Quraysh were abolished except for the Sakaya, uh, serving water to pilgrims, and that was given back to Al Abbas, and the key of the Kaaba returned to Uthman bin Talha of Banu Abdar. B. The Prophet's attributes of mercy, kindness, and forgiveness will keep inspiring Muslims in all ages. The Quran instructs Muslims, You have indeed in the Messenger of God a beautiful pattern of conduct. Surah 33, Ayah 21, al Ahzab. Muslims can forgive their past enemies with a strong hope of reward in both the, in both the worlds. By doing so, uh, they can win the hearts of not only uh, their enemies, but also become a role model for many. In tribal areas of Pakistan, uh, rival parties keep breeding a grudge against each other and uh, set a vicious cycle of enmity. And they should be peacefully invited to study the life of the Prophet and told such a culture and told uh, such a culture was the hallmark of the age of ignorance. Therefore, if they claim to be genuine Muslims, they should abandon hostility and uh, promote a culture of fraternal love. Question 5a. Give an account of the lives of Hazrat Ali bin Abu Talib and Hazrat Zayd bin Haritha, Haritha during the life of the Prophet 10 marks. B. To what extent do Hazrat Ali and Hazrat Zayd's relationships with the Prophet proved models um, for family relations today? Answer A. Harat Ali bin Abu Talib radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Harat Ali was a cousin of the Prophet. The Prophet took Harat Ali as a child and to his home in order to relieve the burden of Abu Talib, uh, who was facing financial difficulties. Thus, Harat Ali was blessed and with the close company of the Prophet from a very young age. When the Prophet proclaimed the prophethood before his relatives, only Harut Ali stepped forward and embraced Islam, being second or third Muslim. Uh, he was 10 or 11 then, and the Quraysh laughed at Ali being made an Amir and that they should obey. His conversation at such young age shows his boldness and the Prophet's trust in him. He stood by the Prophet during the precautions and the social boycott. When the Prophet decided to migrate to Medina, he asked Hazrat Ali to sleep in his bed as a decoy and uh, return uh, belongings to um, to their owners the following morning. In Medina, when the Prophet was sparing Muhajirin with Ansar by Mawakhat, he declared Harut Ali as his brother in trade. Harut Ali set several examples in almost all the battles. In the Battle of Badr, <coughs> he fought in a single combat so together with Harut Hamza and Harut Abu Ubeda. He killed many pagans in the Battle of Uhud. He became the flag bearer after the martyrdom of the first flag bearer after the battle. 
Hazrat Ali and Hazrat Fatima watched the bound of the Prophet in the Battle of the Trench. He repulsed the band of the Meccans who had crossed the ditch and killed some of them. Hazrat Ali played a decisive role in the conquest of Khabar by killing Marhab, the famous Jewish commander and custodian of the fort of Qamus. Uh, he was given the title of Pasadullah, Lion of God, by the Prophet. Peace be upon him. Uh, he was the scribe of the Treaty of Hudaybiyah in 68 or 620 AD. Uh, he was also a major scribe of the Quran. He was one of the flag bearers of the army that conquered Mecca in 88, 630 AD. He also assisted the Prophet peace upon him in smashing the idols in Kaaba when the Prophet raised an army, or army for Tabuk expedition. Harut Ali was not included in it, but the Prophet consoled him by saying, As you are to me, just as Harun was to Musa, except that there will be no Prophet after me. When Hajj became obligatory in 10 years, the Prophet received some verses of Surah 9 al tawbah and he asked Hazrat Ali to read out the verses of the Muslims. Verses to the Muslims. Same year, he was appointed Qazi, judge of Yemen, by the Prophet. The Prophet acknowledged, acknowledged Hazrat Ali's wisdom by saying, the most learned in legal matters is Ali. While returning from farewell pilgrimage, the Prophet stayed at Qadir Khum, delivered a short speech, then raised his hand in his hand and said, Of whomsoever I am Lord, friend, Mawla, this Ali is his Lord, friend, too. Shia Muslims take it as an indication about, by the Prophet to appoint Hazrat Ali his successor. During the last days of the Prophet's fire, uh, Prophet's life, uh, he attended to him fully and on his death washed his body and lowered it into the grave. Hazrat bin Haritha. Hazrat was born Hazrat Zayd was born around 576 to 581 AD to Haritha bin Sharabil and Sudha bin Salaba. He accompanied like his mother to visit her relatives at a very young age. Uh, he was kidnapped and sold to Hazrat Khadija's nephew, who gave him to his aunt. After Khadija's marriage, Zad was presented unto the Prophet by her. After some years, that the relatives reached Mecca and recognized him near the Kaaba. When they approached him, he refused to go back to his family. Then Asad became a freed man and would now be called as Asad bin Muhammad. As per the Arab custom of those days, when the Prophet formally declared prophethood in 610, that was the fourth convert to Islam. Zayd was married to Umm Ayman, Baraka, the freed slave girl of the Prophet. Zayd accompanied the Prophet in 620. When the Prophet visited the Taif, he continuously protected the Prophet from the stones, pelted at him by the people of the town. After the Prophet's migration to Medina, uh, he was sent to Mecca to bring the Prophet's wives and uh, his daughters, Umm Kalthum and Fatima. Zad married the Prophet's cousin, Zanab bint Josh, in 625 AD. 
Zainab was uncomfortable with Zad's background as a slave, so the marriage proved unsuccessful and ended in divorce after one year. Soon after this, the revelation of Surah 33 or 37, God allowed the Prophet to marry Hazrat Zainab. Similarly, the legal status of the adopted son was also explained in the same surah, called them adopted sons by the names of the fathers. That is more than just in the sight of God. Surah 33, Ayat 5, al Ahzab. He participated in the Battle of Badr, Uhud, and Khandak, and was also present on the signing of the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. In 8 years, Hazrat Zad was martyred in the Battle of Mota. Part B. The Prophet extended uh, fatherly love to Hazrat Ali in order to ease the burden of Hazrat Abu Talib. He acted as his mentor and educated him in all worldly and spiritual affairs. Muslims today can follow the Prophet by sharing the burden of their relatives. The Prophet had been brought up as an orphan by Hazrat Abu Talib and by taking Hazrat Ali under his custody, the Prophet acknowledged his uncle's special love, his, or his love to, for his orphan nephew. Muslims today can educate and train and the unsupported relatives in order to strengthen family ties. Hazrat Zayd was adopted by the Prophet and treated him as his son. Muslims today need to learn that irrespective of blood relationship, young unsupported fellows can be brought up as their own children. Once a child is adopted, he or she should never feel any discrimination by the parents or siblings. This will make such young people healthy members of the community.